Ladies and gentlemen, we're outside the booth and inside Glory MMA in Kansas City, Missouri. We've got the number 14 ranked flyweight, 11 and 2, Jeffrey El Jefe Molina. Can I call you Jeffrey? Sure. Now, Jeff, you started fighting at 14. That was a result of playing the UFC video game. Uh, tell me about those earlier days. 14, yeah, it was a lot of uh, spend time in the basement, a lot of crusty socks, and uh, <laughs> oh, playing the UFC video game. Yeah? What um, was your, fa your favorite person to play on the game? <clears throat> Jose Aldo, probably. Okay. Yeah, Jose Aldo was a fun character to play with, just like kick everybody. You know? Oh my god, devastating. 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 Not to get too far ahead, but of course, he just fought Marab. What would you make of that performance? Kind of lackluster. Yeah. Not much. Um, kind of hard to win a fight with no offense, so right. uh, I saw Jose Aldo was kind of shocked afterwards that he lost, but you know, Marab was the one pressing the action. Um, not much damage was done. I feel like Jose would just made it look like Dude, when someone's holding me against the fence, as long as it looks like you're doing damage, that's kind of like the new criteria, especially like the last couple months. So with those knees and yeah. anything, dude. I feel like in my fight, like a lot of people thought I lost that fight, but damage is the biggest criteria, man. So if someone's just holding you against the fence, granted, it's on you to be able to to break the body lock and stuff. But if it at least looks like you're the one damaging the other guy or being offensive, you're gonna win that. Right? Yeah. Um, now, talking about that last fight against Chagas, I mean you obviously thought you lost as well, that split decision. Uh, how confident were you? I'm assuming it was like a 0% when <coughs> it was being read. You are like, yeah, fuck this one. Um, I didn't think I lost. So the reason okay. I, I walked away is sure. uh, earlier in my career, I lost a split decision that I thought I won. And, right. and, and uh, the guy's hometown, I thought uh, Omaha it was a rematch. I beat the guys in amateurs. My last fight as an amateur. Uh, my third professional fight, go to his hometown. It's a split decision, and I lose it. And mm. uh, I'm devastated. I thought I won the fight pretty clearly. I, I had a 10-8 in the third. Um, every judge gave me a 10 in the third. I just didn't realize, like, I didn't know how I lost that fight. So, fast forward to this one, my last go around. Um, I, I hear it's a split decision. Get and, flashbacks, and the, yeah. Dude, PTSD, yeah. the pessimist in here, he was like, fuck, I lost. So I started to walk away, and I turned around. It, it wasn't good for the camera. I got a lot of shit for it. I was like, <laughs> all right, I know not to do that again. It's not that I thought I lost the fight, man. I, I thought okay. I won the fight. You know, I had my hands up afterwards. That reaction was was literally just uh, me being like, "Fuck, I lost." You know, like uh, not that I thought I lost, but just the judges. but just because of what had happened prior. Exactly. Sure. Yeah, yeah. What was the celebration like following that victory? Because I'm assuming it had to have been a fun night uh, post post uh, event. Yeah, it was uh, Cross's birthday that day, actually. So shit. Okay. It was uh, it was a cool little birthday gift to him. It was just like you know, I, I think uh, our gym had like lost the last two UFC fights of, of like our fighters that yeah. fought in the UFC. So. It was good to, to give them that as a birthday present. And uh, I think celebration-wise, we just watched the fights. There wasn't much of a, a turn up that, that night. Uh, yeah, I actually think he went home that day, too. He wanted to be at home with the kids. Yeah. So um, had a couple drinks at like uh, some restaurant. Uh, you know, we now, yeah. Talking about presence, I mean, number 14 ranking in the world accomplished, top 15 in the world. How does that feel? Good, man. Feels good. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty surreal. Like, um, I feel like just a couple years ago, I was uh, you know, just just went pro. I was 19 years old. Um, just went pro. Feels like yesterday. So yeah. it's pretty surreal to to be uh, considered like number 14 in the world. Like I'm top 15, one of the best UFC or one of the best flyweights in the world. So it feels Absolutely. pretty cool. What would you be doing if you weren't fighting? Prostitute. <laughs> Why are you laughing? No, I'm kidding. Uh, dude, I was, I was going to school for uh, I was going to school for criminal justice. No shit. Um, or administration justice, what our school called it, just like a fancy term for criminal justice. Um, I was a semester away from graduating when I dropped out. No fucking yeah, shit. How'd idiot. your parents feel about that one? They weren't too happy about it. You know, yeah. I'm, uh, my parents are Hispanic. They migrated this country like 30 years ago, so they were very much like, dude, finish school, finish school. You know, like, you're our uh, retirement fund, and then I dropped out. But, uh, <laughs> they were like, damn, we backed there. the wrong yeah, horse yeah, in yeah. Jeff, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, yeah. talking about that Hispanic culture, you've inked that on your back alongside the Colombian heritage. Uh, tell me about what it means to represent these communities on sort of the biggest stages in combat sports. Dude, it's awesome. Like, uh, I feel like a lot of the Latin American countries don't have representation, so it's it's pretty cool to to be an athlete in the UFC, yeah. um, getting in, to represent them, you know, on the on the biggest stage. Um, I feel like the UFC gives us a platform to to speak out about anything I want to speak out about, and uh, it's just cool to be able, anytime I go out there and fight, uh, I'm representing uh, the country of Columbia. Now, I want to change gears, get a little bit back in the day. You wrestled during your time at Olath South High School? Olath South. Olath South yeah. High School. Put now, some respect on it, dude. The school, hey, hey, I apologize. It's the TH. I never yeah. know how to pronounce it. But that school never brought home a uh, state title in wrestling, and since then still has not captured one. How badly did you want to be able to accomplish that during your time there? It was tough, man. Uh, I'd only wrestled 
two years. So like I started doing MMA first, and sure. my coach Jason High was like, "Hey, next year you're wrestling." So I was like, "Cool." Like uh, there was no questioning it. So the next year I wrestled, but these guys have been wrestling their whole lives. So right. um, I was kind of at a disadvantage in that sense. And uh, when I started my junior year, uh, I was JV for like the first half, and uh, just having some like MMA experience. There's a lot of things I was doing right, but also a lot of things I was doing wrong. Right. You know, like I was I was trying to roll from when somebody had a body lock and I just end up flat backed and, and then pinned. So um, end up getting moved to varsity uh, last half of, of uh, my junior year and then obviously I was varsity my senior year. So it, it was tough, man, just because um, these guys have been wrestling their whole lives and I just started it. But it was uh, it was fun and I learned a lot from it and it was just a, a good base to, to have in, in MMA. Now, keeping in the ballpark of competition, uh, sort of getting back to that video game experience, you grew up in those Xbox lobbies, which uh, are notoriously nuclear. I was curious, what sort of what sort of games were you on about, and if you had any any experience in the Call of Duty lobbies, because those were yeah, quite of course, fantastic. man. It was, uh, it was Gears of War, Call of Duty, um, Halo, yeah, all that. And those uh, those lobbies are toxic, man. They you know, suck, especially as, like a thirteen year old kid. You're telling everybody you're gonna fuck their moms. And <laughs> they all suck and. Yeah, you know, you learn a lot uh, about yourself. It's uh, it's real character building, you know. <laughs> Just discovering. <laughs> yeah. um, now, a couple of UFC stats I want to throw at you. You're currently 0 for 3 on takedowns within the UFC. Let's go. I was curious. Let's I, I want to know, what do you, you going to secure? Yeah, right? Um, yeah, I feel like my grappling is a little underrated. I feel like I showed a good grappling defense against Zalgus. Um, I did have the inability to break that body lock, but anytime yeah. you tried to advance the and actually get the takedown, I was able to scramble back up if not reverse the position. So um, haven't really shot for a takedown. Um, right. I know I'm 0 for 3, but like those aren't like real attempts Completely. to where like yeah. shooting open mat double legs. But I feel like my, my grappling is a little underrated and uh, there's going to be one of these fights, hopefully uh, the, the matchup I want, um, where I might bring my wrestling shoes. Now, talk about that matchup. You've been campaigning for Madison Square Garden on November 12th. How badly would you like to get on that card? That'd be sick. That'd yeah. be sick. It doesn't look like it's going to happen, but it'd be really cool if it, if it could make it happen. If uh, I reached out, we, we've reached out to, to Mick Maynard, uh, the matchmaker, and just growing up in the East Coast, man, like Madison Square Garden was the place. Like yeah. all the big shows, all the big concerts, all the cool stuff happens there. Um, Growing up, we could never afford to go to any of those, but it'd be really cool to, to fight there. And just being an East Coast guy, um, I have family and friends that still live out there, so it'd be pretty cool to fight there. Sure, sure. Bucket now, list item for sure. <laughs> uh, you're a big goal setter as well, which I think is really interesting. In 2016, the goal was to remain undefeated, collect two regional titles. 2018, it was to have a four-fight win streak. Um, what was this year's goal, and what is next year's goal, if you've got it laid out and set in stone? I probably wrote down in my notes. Um, yeah. It, it was to be ranked. This, ranked. That was this year. Um, and, well, congrats. And I, and I, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Um, <laughs> And it was also uh, invest in real estate, which I did this year too. So I got my first investment property. So no shit. Uh, check those off. How's that um, going? Good, man. It's good. I, I bought a, it's probably like 15 minutes from here. Bought an investment property. Um, got a tenant. Pays me every month. It's, there uh, you go. Yeah. That's that passive income. There Talk about is, passive man. income. You're a betting guy as Let's well. Go. That's quite well documented. You've had a winning record so far. Um, and additionally, you've closed as a favorite in all of your UFC fights. What does it mean to be a better and have that gambling republic back you? inside your contest it's cool man it's cool um just like the internet it can be pretty toxic like if, the yeah. point, if somebody loses like it's like oh you fucking suck dude you lost yeah, me. pay me my money back you lost yeah. me x amount of money that's stupid. gambling man yeah. um so that, that kind of sucks to see from the, the gambling community but it's fun man so it's a good way to make money i feel like um so i quit my job last july and when i quit my job i went up to crowds so like dude i'm fucking i'm freaking out like I quit my job i have no passive income coming in and if I were to tear my ACL tomorrow, I'd be out for a year, yeah. not making any money. Like he's like, dude, chill out. And he uh, kind of showed me the ropes with degeneracy, and uh, it's been good, man. I've been able to pay my bills when I'm not fighting. Um, and I feel like we have some sort of like, like in stocks, it's called insider trading, right? If you have inside right. knowledge. And degeneracy, MMA gambling, it's just like, yeah. it's just knowing something, you know? Like, I know when some of these guys are injured, I, I've trained some of these guys. I've gone down to ATT when I was 18 years old and then done camps down there. I've, I've trained in other places, Colorado. So I know some of these guys pretty well. So having that little insider trading tip uh, helps out a lot. And it's a good way to make money. Hey, fair. If you got the edge, you got the edge. But now, keeping it within the 125 pound division, obviously Demetrius Johnson does, just beat Adriano Rice in a uh, massive way. I was hoping you could comment on that and, you know, where do you rank him within the all time grades? He's up there, man. Top top yeah. five for sure. Maybe even top three. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's great, man. He's amazing. Uh, that was kind of uh, shocking to me with the. Um, as the champ, people want to see you lose, and just mm -hmm. him winning for so long, I think was part of the reason, part of the reason why the division got dry, and, and for a while they wanted to get rid of it. 
Um, so, but the lack of skill was never there. Like the guy's super talented. He, he's he's a goat. He's amazing. So, uh, yeah, he, he's really good. And I, dude, if you look back at his highlight reel, there's plenty of highlights, man. So yeah. the, the argument for him to be boring or something um, exactly was never yeah, there. You know? Yeah. Now. Any closing thoughts or messages to people that have supported you along the way, undefeated in the UFC, now ranked in the top 15? Yeah, what do you have to say to people? Oh. No, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> thank you. you know, it means a lot, dude. It, it's pretty cool. Uh, the support's, uh, it, it, it's always uh, something I'll, that'll never get old. Like, mm. taking pictures with fans, uh, since, like signing fan mail, like that will forever be super fucking cool to me. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Jeff, thank you for the time. The number 14 ranked flyweight will hopefully be back in action before the end of this year.